I will carefully fold up the corners, start spinning. Whoa, I'm Dan and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for 40 years. I'm gonna test some salad gadgets and see if I can find a way to make them better. Come up a bit here, maybe a little bit more narrow. Flare these up a bit. These are the products I'm going to test. The Chefin Salad Dressing Emulsifier. The Mueller Austria Premium Quality V-Pro Multiplate Adjustable Mandolin Cheese Vegetable Slicer Cutter Shredder. The Vegetable and Salad Spinner with Pouring Spout. The Xylus Easy Pull Food Processor. The Briefton Express Food Chopper. <music> Chefin Salad Dressing Emulsifier. Its purpose in life is to mix oil, vinegar, and whatever else you want to add to your dressing. So it looks like you bought it in a store. Let's see how well this works. Cap off. I'm really curious about the shape. Welcome to my laboratory. Vinegar, olive oil. Let's add some thyme, drop it right in. Let's add some pepper, salt, and let's add some honey. Or let's add some honey. Okay, cap back on and let's give it a squeeze. And yeah, it sure seems to be mixing it up well. Mission accomplished. Squeezing is a little hard than I would have expected. It takes a little bit of force to do it. Let's see how that compares with using something that you may already have at home. Like for instance, a bottle. I gotta say, it was a little bit easier than squeezing. In terms of effectiveness on a scale of one to five, I would give it a three. It actually does it, it just takes a little more effort than I would have expected. Question is, is it any more effective than a twist top cap? Let's try the left-handed oil test. Now this is a test that I do to challenge myself by making my non-dominant hand slippery. If you really wanna see how well something works in your hands, put your hand at a disadvantage. Let's see if I can unspin this. And kind of worked okay, although the top wasn't on very tight, I will say. Now let me try. Okay, so I've gotta say tightening it is a bit tricky. Boy, with my left hand, I can push against the lever. My right hand just wants to spin. So I can't get the top on very tight. When I'm squeezing, it doesn't quite want to stay in place. I don't know if you can see that lift in my hand. Uh, I cannot get a third finger around it. So I feel a little less control, maybe a lot less control. In terms of usability now, I would give it a two. I think with a couple of simple changes, the problems I'm having now could have been easily resolved. So let's think about a redesign. When you want to squeeze something harder, what you really want to do is get this to land in the middle segment of your finger, not on the fingertips. So the stretch is a little wider than I would desire. So I would do something a little differently. Because of where the hinge is placed, if I really put all four fingers on the lever, my index finger is doing nothing. You really want to press the lever down below the point where it hinges. I would see if there was a way to work out this mechanism so that all four fingers can be held up top, which means the index finger, middle, ring, and pinky finger would all be moving in the direction that would allow this to pump. The other thing I would watch is because the shape of this bottle was spinning when you try to open this or tighten it, there's just very difficult with a slippery hand to do that. I would try to make this an oval because with an oval, it would be much less prone to slip in your hand when you're putting the cap on or taking the cap off. The other thing I would watch is that as you squeeze this, because of the angle of this bottle, my thumb really wants to work its way up. I would take the skinniest part of the bottle and raise it closer to the pivot of a lever. Another feature of this bottle is that the spout can lift up. It's got a, well, it looks like silicone gasket here to keep the oil in place if you want to just store it as it is in the refrigerator. It's a little fussy to get your fingers under that spout. So maybe I would make that just a little more generous. Come up a bit here. It's okay as it is, but I think I would enhance that a little bit, add a little more space. For a buy rating on a one to five scale, I would give this a solid two. It does have an entertainment value, just needed a little more thinking design-wise. So yeah, I'll give it a two. The mandolin. And it's got several different attachments. Its purpose is to slice, dice, julienne, does a number of things. We're gonna put it through its paces. Let's test its effectiveness on these cucumbers. So I'm gonna start by changing from this cheese grater attachment to the slicer. And this is being a little fussy in wanting to pop out. Okay, I got it. I'm going to place this back in the empty slot and put these slicing attachments in place. I think I'm gonna start by just holding this by hand and slicing it. 
Let's see how those look. So yeah, it requires holding this thing pretty steady. That could be the case with any mandolin, so I won't hold that against it. This comes with an attachment when you get a little low. So I'm gonna cut to the chase and start with a smaller piece. So this attachment will slide into some tracks here. Oh no, that just wants to hang up. We're not having fun there at all. Let me try a different technique. Instead of this rounded edge, I'm gonna try a flat cut. So these slices are pretty even. Seems a little fussy, including the way these attachments are inserted and extracted. And it sounds kind of cheap too. Mandolin blades can be sharp, so you have to be really careful. But boy, the way your finger gets under here and wants to pull that out and just doesn't want to give, it's not actually feeling pleasant. It actually kind of hurts. Now it doesn't seem to be clicking in. Boy, I don't think the Austrians at Mueller got the uh, click science down. Let's say, God forbid, you don't have the Mueller Austria V-Pro. Let's try it with a knife. Felt that one pretty quickly and pretty smoothly. In terms of effectiveness, I would give it a solid two, and that's being generous. Okay, so let's try the Mueller Austria premium quality V-Pro mandolin slicer, shredder, dicer, etc with a slippery non-dominant hand. I want to remove the grater that's in place now. And I got, oh, I gotta tell you, that took some work. This lip is a little on the shallow side. I am going to start with just the full cucumber. Yeah, same as before, I'm getting very uneven slices. It's very thin on one end, thick on the other end. Use a smaller slice. So let me try the attachment. Boy, I'm not feeling super confident. Okay, I feel that maybe my technique's getting a little better. But boy, it still seemed a little awkward. I will say what it has going for it is once you get the technique down, every slice is consistent. Uh, but you got a little bit of cleanup to do here once you're done, as opposed to just using a knife. Not, in, whoa, and then you have that problem. In terms of usability, I would rate this a two and a half. I think there are better mandolins out there. It's not loving it. I may talk myself down to a two. Let's see how I would redesign this. Boy, the way this clicks in and out, it's just not a good introduction to a product when you can't get these pieces out. But when you pull them out, they actually sounds like something just broke. I would re-engineer that click mechanism and try to get it to sound better. That could be a matter of using a better quality plastic of course, now I can't tell which piece is which. If they were marked out here some way, that would be a, a, at least a bit of an improvement. To start with, let me outline this shape and it's symmetric back and front. See, let me do this as well. But this can get switched pretty easily. You only want to use this mandolin in one direction. You want to go down in the curve, but also because of the way the blades fit in, you can see I'm struggling already to get this in. I think this may be a little bit more narrow and a little wider, asymmetric, so that it clearly only fits one way. So I would work with that shape. The other thing I would look at is the way this track fits in. It was just way too fussy before. I don't know if you could see this track here, but it's a straight shot. Let me draw it this way. Here's the track part. Here's the groove. You want to try to get it into this middle part. I think I would flare this up. That way you have a more forgiving lead in when, when you start to get this part into the track. There is a rubber piece here and a rubber piece here, which should act as feet. But because of the height of this plastic part, that back foot is not touching the table at all. So that seems like somebody's mistake. Probably the same people who engineered the click. This piece actually, now that I look at it more closely, seems to pop out. But the purpose of doing that is pretty unclear to me. So yeah, I think there are a lot of things that I would tackle here in a redesign. As you can probably tell, I'm not sure where to start. As a buy rating, I would give this a one. I don't think I would recommend this to anyone. It's just too big and bulky and clumsy and cheap feeling. I would hate to recommend this to someone and see them again the next week. Vegetable and salad spinner with pouring spout. It knows how to do two things. It knows how to wash lettuce and it knows how to dry it. Let's see how effective it is. I'm gonna start with some romaine lettuce and to begin, I'm gonna slice it into just about one inch pieces. And let's fill her up and let's get some water in there and some water on the table. Okay, let's try the wash cycle. The one thing I'm a little concerned about here already is that it looks a little dangerous actually if you get your finger down there. And you can certainly get your finger caught, but let's pour it out. Okay, that's done, time to dry. Let's do the dry cycle. And see what we got. 
it seems pretty acceptable. This lettuce is dry, certainly to a point where it's ready to be used. Okay, imagine in your wildest dreams that you don't have a salad spinner. I'm gonna use this bowl on the table. I would assume you would use a sink to do this. I don't know if the spinner is doing any better a job at washing the lettuce than I am doing here. Of course, if you had a colander, you would already have it drained, but I'm gonna try this with the bowl. I'm gonna lay out the towel. I'm gonna put my lettuce on the towel. I will carefully fold up the corners, start spinning. Whoa! First of all, they look much happier going that way. I do think the salad spinner is more effective, but boy, as a workaround, give it a shot. It's a little more fun. In terms of a rating for that, I would give it a three. I wasn't loving it. It was a little awkward to spin. And again, that hole in the top, the chances of a pinch accident seem rather high. Okay, I'm gonna try this now by making my left hand slippery. Put the lettuce back in. Let's fill it with water. Whoa, we're tripping. Cap back on and let's give it a spin. Just hoping my thumb doesn't slip. This piece is not feeling well. The way it's molded, I feel some flash here. I felt it before too. I think if I owned this, I would literally get some sandpaper and smooth this edge because they did not do it in the manufacturing process. It takes a little effort to spin this. In terms of usability, let's give it a three and a half. Boy, it just feels cheap. Let's talk about a redesign. I think to start with, I would start with a better quality plastic. You can just tell from the way it's molded and parts are rippled that it's just not high quality molding. This seems relatively breakable and I'm sure you've had things like this where these fins break rather easily. I believe these flip tabs can be redesigned. And I think the way I would do that is to flare these up a bit, just a little bit, just so you have a little bit better chance of getting your finger under there without breaking your fingernail. Uh, my big concern here, as mentioned, is this hole. Boy, this just seems so precarious and you just don't want to get a thumb or a pinky or any kind of skin in there. I don't really see a good reason for this. It's possibly there to fill with water as you're cleaning it out. But boy, I think it's overkill. Or at the very least, they could have used the same grate here that they use here so that you can still get water through the grate, but your finger doesn't have a chance of getting in there. For this hole, I would do a very similar thing. Just put something there to prevent your finger from falling in unexpectedly. Of the handle, it doesn't feel good when it spins. As this is spinning, it gets some momentum and it gets a little bit wobbly. So you really wanna hold this down. But the other thing that would help would be maybe not make this so slippery and smooth and curvy on this side. It may help to flare this up a little bit. So from this angle, and here's the hole, so maybe when we shape it in three dimensions, when this comes up here, maybe make this a little bit more of a spout so that it's a little more accurate when it's pouring out. It's not really the pouring out though, that's the issue here, that the issue is actually stabilizing it with your opposite hand. I think if this flares up a little bit, you'd be a little bit better off at stabilizing it. One other thought is that I would think I would make this a little more storable. Right now, you may wanna get rid of this height as you store it in a cupboard or a drawer. And as you turn around, it just seems a little wobbly. So it could be designed to invert and be more stable so it's not doing this. It just needs to be in the thought process when someone is designing this that this is one of its uses is in storage. So in terms of a buy rating, I would give it no more than a two. I think it's saving grace. It probably, it's inexpensive compared to some of the other ones, but that has its drawbacks in that it's also very breakable. And once it breaks, it's actually more expensive. Xylus, easy pull food processor. Its purpose in life, its reason to be, or raison d'etre, is to process food. Hold on, stand back, because you use the same action on your lawnmower when your grass needs cutting. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna give it a try. We have a bowl full of shelled pecans. The blade is already in place as I'm pouring the pecans in. And stand back, let's go. Whoa, one pull, and boy, I feel the power. So not only is this great exercise, but boy, five or six pulls and these pecans look pretty evenly chopped. If I kept going, I could have just kept turning it into dust. I think it is ready for the salad. Okay, let's compare the Xylus Easy Pull food processor to a knife. In 
terms of effectiveness on a scale from one to five, I would give it a five. More impressive than I expected. And boy, it was really quick. Okay, let's make my left hand slippery. I'm going to lift the top and there's not a great way to lift the top with slippery hands. I'm going to place the blade back where it belongs and let's give it a couple of pulls. Two, four, five, six. Okay, that's about what I did last time. And it is not looking too shabby. It looks like it's pretty well crushed. I did notice a few additional issues with it, but boy, it wasn't really an issue of usability. In terms of usability, I'm not gonna give it a five, but I would, I guess I would give it a four in terms of usability. There are a couple of things that I think I would recommend on a redesign. One of them would be an easier way to remove the top. So in this direction, where this top comes around like this, and I'm gonna do the full thing here. I would come out a little more here or put in a shape that's gonna allow fingers to get under here. So it's gonna be just a little bit easier to lift Another thing I would look into is while the handle itself is not a problem, I think just to make it a little more finger friendly, I would give the inside of the handle just a little more of a belly. It really just fits the shape of your fingers a little better. Something else I would consider though, and I noticed this especially when my hands are slippery, is that as I'm pulling in one direction, I really need to stabilize it. And what's gonna happen as you're pulling, it's gonna wanna tip the entire product forward. I think I would give this like a bit of a lip or a tail that comes up. Still keep the groove for the handle, but just flare it so that as I'm pulling, I've got something to resist that pull force. As a buy rating, I would give it a five. I would recommend it. I would say it's a keeper. Briefton's Express Food Chopper. Its purpose is to chop food. It's got a three prong blade. And as I start spinning, spins like a top, it should be chopping. Let's give it a try. I'm gonna put it in the whole onion. Let's see what it does if I don't even bother chopping the onion in half. Pretty well chopped. It's very even, I'd say. I think a better technique may have been to chop those onions in half, but I just wanted to see what it would do with a whole onion. It uh, got through it pretty well. Okay, so I've got two red onions. We're gonna go at this with a knife. I think I would go with the food chopper over the knife. Compared with using a knife, I would rate the effectiveness at a five. So much less crying involved. I'm gonna try this again, but this time I'm going to make my non-dominant hand slippery. Let me open this up left-handed. I'm gonna drop in the whole onions like I did before. I'm going to push, and it's a little hard to get started. There we go. Notice I had two hands in there anyway. I just need the power to get through the full onion. So it takes some work and because I'm right-handed, I can really feel a little more effort using my left hands, just I'm not as strong. That being said, it looks pretty consistent and I thought it worked pretty well. I, th I think we're okay. In terms of usability, I don't think I'll give it a five out of five. I think I'll drop it down to four and a half. I don't think I would recommend it for everyone because it does take some work. And if you are in the kitchen and you didn't have that upper body strength or the weight to push down on it, I think you would want to get some help. So let's think about a redesign or at least some design updates or recommendations on how to prove this design. I think one of the things I would look into is the ratio of how fast the blades spin compared to how hard you have to push. So if the ratio was a little bit different, I think it would take a little less effort to spin those blades and you may be able to cut with a little more ease. I'm not sure you need this excessive speed. And I think that can be an improvement. That's a mechanical improvement more than a physical design improvement. And then in terms of uh, the way it's chopping or the way it's stable or the shape of how this fits on, I think that's that's all okay. I think storage is a little tricky because I just don't think it wants to easily store away. You can certainly store it like this or you can store these two parts separately, but for storage, this is ends up kind of tall. I think if anything, I would probably make the lock a little bit easier, well, a little bit easier to slide because it's just got a couple of ripples here. And I think instead of these very fine ripples, I'm just gonna draw that part of it here. I would really go whole hog and make this thing really pushable side to side. For a buy rating, I would give it a four and a half. It chops pretty well. I don't think it's for everyone unless you have the upper body weight or strength to operate it. 
And a special bonus, the Evian Cherry Olive Pitter. Okay, guess what? We've got a super secret extra bonus gadget that we're going to evaluate. So let's see how it works. I am going to load a olive and it's in line. Give it a squeeze. And that was pretty good. The pit came out. The olive stayed mostly intact. Actually, the inside came out a little bit, but still it's reasonable. If you're willing to lose little bits of the olive or you're willing to have these entrails hanging out, or if you want to go back and stuff them back in, I think this is working pretty well. You could also, as an alternative, go to the section of your supermarket, go to that bin that has the already pitted olives. But if you are intent on having olives with their pits in them when you buy them, this is working okay. So let's think about a redesign or at least a design improvement on this. I'm gonna trace this. Here is this piece. This actually comes up like that and around. And this looks a little more like this. This flares up. So the way to hold this would be like this. And what I'm noticing is that this is a bit of a stretch from my thumb to my index finger, but it'd be great if we can get a few more fingers involved in the push force in the downward motion. Instead of a pivot point here, I would see if we can design a parallel action. So the top part of it pushes and the fingers are moving more in a perpendicular direction as we're squeezing it. Now that could be a bit of a tricky mechanism, but not impossible to design. For a quick rating on a scale of one to five, I would give it a three because I think it's okay. I think it does what it's expected. Anything that gets you closer to eating a salad is a good thing. Let's see how we did by actually trying the salad. I'm getting skinnier already and I definitely will be using some of these gadgets uh, at home and actually looking forward to it.